Hello, my name is Scott Davis and welcome to New World Birth by Access in this presentation. You're inviting me to share this information regarding our passage through this challenging and yet very hopeful time. And this is the care and feeding of a New World Age report for the Gregorian date of April 27th, 2013. And uh, it's one manique. Uh, in the or deer in the Mayan Zolking calendar, and we're also going to discuss Mercury moving into Taurus, Venus moving into Gemini, and the Taurus new moon. April 27th is uh, one Manique or deer, which carries the themes of service, healing, protection, sacrifice, uh, intuitive and instinctual knowledge, the four directions, shamanic energy, ritual, dance, dignity. Respect and the break and breaking free of uh, limitations. Uh, the ritual deer dance symbolizes the sanctity and balance between the people and and nature. And the energy of deer is to rise up above uh, the limitations of living a life only on the physical plane. So this is a time to connect with uh, spirituality through ceremony, dance, ritual, and of course being in nature. Uh, this is also a time to find strength to break free of anything limiting spiritual growth and healing. And then before I get into the daily energy of the uh, one Manique Tresena, um, I thought I would uh, uh, give a metaphysical overview of May. And May is the fifth month uh, with and with the digits for the year being 2013. When we add them all up together, we get uh, 11. And then when we add one and one together, we realize that this, uh, the energy of May is 11 and, and of course, two um, month in numerology, which brings a real spiritual quality to the month. So we're, already we're looking at uh, that as we move into May, we're moving into, uh, it will be uh, during the Tresena that's really about uh, this sort of spiritual quality of, 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 of uh, uh, you know, rising, uh, you know, uh, living life on more than just the, uh, the material plane. Um, and, uh, when, uh, when you think about this, the, uh, the 11 2 combination as it's represented, uh, in the tarot, well, the 11 is lust or strength and the two is the high priestess, uh, in the tarot cards, uh, which is about, uh, being in our strength, that's the, the lust or strength card, and, uh, and being in our bodies, uh, while experiencing our intuition, uh, independence, and self, uh, self trust and self uh, resourcefulness is, is really themes that we see out of the high priestess. Uh, May is also brings us the first solar eclipse of 2013, uh, and the time between the lunar eclipse from uh, April 25th and the solar eclipse on May 9th, we're experiencing circumstances uh, to step up the, uh, the action with the sense that if we don't really launch ourselves in a new direction, we may feel like we're going to be left behind. And we begin... Uh, the month with the Sun, Venus, Mar and Mars in Taurus, and then it's joined by Mercury on the first, uh, which creates uh, some tension with the uh, uh, with Saturn and Scorpio uh, that insists that we take responsibility and work towards the path that we've been uh, we've been shown over these uh, over the uh, the last month. Uh, so this is uh, this is a new journey cast off. Uh, on the uh, Taurus new moon and solar eclipse. Uh, and by the time, uh, by this time, it, what's happening is like taking the easy way out is really no longer an option, which many will experience that as frustration. Uh, May also begins all the planets uh, appear to be moving forward, except for uh, Saturn and uh, Pluto, which appear to be moving retrograde or inverse from our perspective here on Earth, and I've said this before, the planets don't really move in reverse in their orbits, but appear to be moving backwards, much like a car passing a slower moving car. There's a point where the slower moving car uh, appears to be moving in reverse uh, when compared to landmarks in the far distance. And Saturn, 
uh, appearing to uh, to be in reverse motion can be compared to a time period of recuperation and perhaps having to backtrack regarding some obstacle in our path. But after the retrograde per period, we can um, uh, advance forward towards our goals feeling a little more rested and with a little more efficient process as long as we honor uh, Saturn by not trying to push through things regardless of the resistance. And then with Pluto, um, uh, the planet of transformation and death, and uh, through death in a rebirth cycle, moving retrograde, which is about uh, reviewing our past, all the retrogrades are looking backwards, which will require us to release anything from the past that isn't a burden to our new path. Um, we can choose to let go or we can have it ripped out of our hands, as I said before. Uh, but this is a choice. Our real choice about this is how we, we want to react to it. Uh, but Pluto is going to take our baggage regardless of our attachment to it if it does not have a purpose in our rebirth. And Pluto represents death, uh, completion. And in Capricorn, uh, we're talking about the breakdown of structures to bring about transformation. Uh, besides the stellum of planets in Taurus that are opposing Saturn and the eclipses, we also have other alignments that really indicate uh, an increase in intensity and more powerful events on the world stage. Uh, we have the third uh, square between uh, Uranus and Pluto. So from our perspective here on Earth, this is a forming a 90 degree angle, which is a very challenging angle. Uh, and that happens on the 20th. And then uh, 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 Jupiter um, up here, it's in Gemini. Uh, at the po point of the square is actually conjunct the uh, USA's natal Mars, so uh, which uh, the, the exactitude of it was the day before. But this is significant in discussing the square because what this can mean is that the United States may engage in expansive Jupiter escalation of communications, Gemini, uh, related to aggression, anger, conflict and competition to actually uh, uh, going as far as having more military actions because those are all themes of Mars from the natal chart. So this is going to be a time period that breaks down the status quo and, and relieves us of old habits uh, that have, uh, have outgrown their usefulness as the pace is really starting to quicken. Uh, the chart of the third Uranus Pluto square has many interesting alignments that should be noted. First of all, the sun moves into Gemini less than two hours before the square is exact, which illuminates intelligence and communication uh, uh, for this time leading up to the fourth square on November 1st. And with the moon in Libra, it makes a trine or 120 degree angle to the sun. Uh, our emotions are really going to be aligned with the uh, sun's energy, which is which really brings about this quality of opening up our hearts. Uh, and then Mercury, which rules Gemini, is also in Gemini. Uh, so this really places even more emphasis on genius thinking and communications. And Mercury forms an exact sextile, which is a 60 degree angle, uh, to Uranus. Uh, and then we also have, uh, um, uh, it, it, and Mercury is also forming a 150 degree angle, which we call in conjunct to Pluto, uh, which exposes the dark energies that we're no longer able to pull, to pull the, that people are no longer able to pull the wool over the eyes of the majority of the people as more and more of us are waking up during this four year process of Uranus and Pluto squares. And I believe this is going to be, uh, a, a, a real significant shift, uh, this year as the masses will uh, say no more to the systems of oppression, whether they're financial, governmental, or religious. Saturn and Scorpio, uh, will not compromise in its support, uh, and, and, and it's being supported by a trine with Neptune in Pisces, which brings people, uh, to courageously share their truth. And this, uh, may be an uncomfortable experience with Venus in Gemini squaring Chiron in Pisces, uh, which exposes our pain, 
to allow healing. So this time period between now and November may be really overwhelming in the experiences of human suffering, uh, particularly the suffering of women. Uh, this also indicates uh, 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 major weather changes and other astonishing events as as the uh, Pluto Uranus square continues to break down outdated structures of government and corporations through the empowerment of individuals fighting for change. So don't let don't be expect the media to cover the revolution. Um, and I, as I was considering. Uh, that during this square, Jupiter would be so tightly conjunct at the same exact degree as Mars in the USA's uh, natal chart of July 4th, 1776 at 5, 10 p.m., uh, which brings expan uh, an expansive force to gamble on aggressive and potentially violent situations. The United States government may, be, may take foolish risks believing that it can do no wrong and then become hopelessly un, uh, overextended, uh, most likely uh, in yet another confrontation or war. Uh, when I look at, at the future uh, Uranus-Pluto squares, I realize that April 21st of, of 2014 square um, uh, would have Pluto exactly opposing and Uranus exactly squaring the uh, USA's Cancer Sun, and then the final square in March 17th, uh, 2015, would have Uranus exactly opposing and Pluto exactly squaring the USA's Saturn in Libra. Um, so these squares, as difficult as these transits are going to be globally, the United States has a front row seat on this roller coaster of death and rebirth, you know, transformation through revolution, which I will believe will lead to a complete collapse of the U.S.'s economy when Pluto comes in, uh, into the uh, the second house of the United States' uh, natal chart of resources, and that will be in 2016. Uh, it's never been there before, and when it comes around again, this is going to be really significant. Uh, early 2016 will be the first hit. Um, and then we also have Uranus is going to conjunct or be at the same angle as the U.S.'s Chiron on, uh, on uh, June 25th, 2015, August 26th, 2015, and April 5th, 2016. Uh, and we can expect those time periods to be re bring really intense events of unexpected wounding and healing, you know, so... Um, I, I know I'm going on a lot about the United States and that is the country I live in. But, you know, these these shifts in the United States will uh, certainly have a global effect. Uh, you know, uh, if, if the United States economy collapses, uh, it's going to affect the economies worldwide. So I think that Nero can rosin up his bow and tune up his fiddle because another empire is about to burn to the ground. At least metaphorically over the uh, over the next uh, uh, you know three to four years. So anyway, let's look at the daily vibrational energy for this Tresena. April twenty seventh, twenty thirteen is one manique or deer, which is about unity experience through being a service to others. With the Sagittarius moon being challenged by Neptune, which can bring dreamy thoughts where fantasies are more important than reality. And this can cause confusion as it's difficult to understand what's happening in our environments, which may bring miscommunications. So, uh, you know, I'd avoid making any major decisions until clarity really returns. And then the 28th is to Lamat or star, which is duality experienced through being grateful for abundant relationships as we have the sun here in Taurus, opposing Saturn. So from the perspective here on Earth, we have uh, a, a 180 degrees between the position of the Sun and the position of Saturn, uh, which, is, uh, which is the last major transit in April. Um, and and we, we re this is really about becoming conscious of limitations in our lives uh, that's been opposed on us by others or by circumstances, just knowing that energy is affecting us is really helpful. And also knowing that it's only going to last a, a, a day or two. 
Uh, this may be uh, a, a difficult day for communication, so just don't let it drag you down or overwhelm you. And this day is about trying to find a way to balance our needs with our obligations. And with the uh, all the eclipse energy influencing us, this will even seem more serious as we're getting a real good dose of reality by everything that's coming in at this point. Uh, so it's best to put this influence into maintaining something that's already in motion rather than trying to start something new. And with the moon in Sagittarius, supported by Uranus and opposed by Jupiter, the day begins with, uh, with enthusiasm for new experiences and then later shifts to generous, benevolent uh, feelings, but with a caution against making a major financial commitment. Uh, and then April 29th is three Maluk or offering, which is about taking action through appreciating creation as the moon finds support for Mercury and Mars and harmonizes with Neptune and Saturn. The day begins with people being aware of their feelings and able to express them with clarity. And then later it brings a sensitivity to other people's moods with the potential for having uh, psychic experiences. And finally, uh, it, it, it being able to assert ourselves in a positive manner with strength and stability to move forward uh, with a project that is currently in the works. And then the 30th, we have four ock or dog, uh, which is uh, in the Zol King. This is about stability through enjoying family and friends. With the Capricorn moon, a very stable moon, uh, supported uh, by the sun and Venus and challenged by Uranus and merging with Pluto, the day begins with a sense of harmony between our inner and outer worlds, uh, which brings confidence, but also has this rebellious energy, uh, which might have people jumping to incorrect conclusions. Uh, later, emotions are intensified as feelings are coming to the surface from deep in the psyche. And then finally, it shifts to having pleasant feelings, uh, uh, for uh, being with our friends or out socializing. And then May 1st is uh, Five Chuin or uh, Monkey, which is about empowerment through creating something new. And this brings uh, Mercury into Taurus. So it moves across into Taurus. And uh, with Mercury in Taurus, uh, uh, and this is, the Mercury is just flying right now, it's moving really fast. Uh, so it's only going to be in Taurus for uh, for two weeks, and then it goes into Gemini on May 15th. But in Taurus, Mercury is going to slow down communications and stabilize thinking uh, to be more practical and uh, constructive. And then also on, on the first, uh, Mars, uh, which is also in Taurus, uh, is opposing uh, Saturn in Scorpio uh, from our perspective here on Earth. So uh, we have Mars. I probably have to move it over a little bit to make it look right. Okay, so from here in the Earth, there's a line where, uh, from uh, the, from our perspective on Earth, we have a, a 180 degrees uh, from where Mars is in Taurus to where Saturn is in Scorpio. Uh, so this is this is called an opposition, and it's a it's tension. These two th energies are pulling us in different directions. And so what it does is it really pr uh, uh, prompts us to take responsibility, Saturn, for our actions, Mars, as we emerge. At, uh, and and, and, and uh, this is really uh, moving us towards new beginnings that will occur with the Taurus new moon on May 9th. And Mars in a tense relationship with Saturn can be cruel um, as people will, will you know, tend to hold in their anger uh, after being wronged rather than express it uh, to the to the other who that you know the others wounded them in some way so it's really best to try to relax and avoid situations and people that produce meaningless tension in our lives uh, on, 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 on on this day and then we also have the Sun uh, trining Pluto. Okay, so what that means from our perspective here on Earth is the Sun 
is at a 120 degree angle to Pluto from, from, from where we are on Earth, which brings very intense and powerful experiences uh, which may illuminate our deepest psychology and our darkest and normally unseen mental realms. Uh, this is great transformational energy uh, for investigation into what parts of our lives should be reformed. Uh, be careful, though, of folks who use this energy for ruthless or selfish purposes. And then we have the moon being challenged by Mercury and Saturn. So the day's emotional energy moves from people being critical in their communications, uh, particularly with people that they have intimate relationships with. And then later, feeling sort of a sense of loneliness and being out of touch with others. And then the second is six ebb or road, which is about being in the flow through serving your community with the last quarter moon in Aquarius being challenged by Mars and the sun and stimulated by Uranus and supported by Jupiter. So early in the day, there's, there's a, a danger of uh, needless conflicts uh, as people are irritable and acting rashly. And then later, uh, the energy shifts to sort of pleasant yet restless feelings with the desire to have some excitement. And then it's encouraging, uh, uh, then there's enc uh, encountering a challenge to, uh, you know, maintaining our daily routines. But then it finishes up finally with an optimistic, positive uh, mood, uh, which, and a sort of a pleasant sense of well being. Then we get to May 3rd, seven Ben or Reed or Corn. Uh, this is about reflection through maintaining the uh, home as the moon is, in a, is challenged by Venus, stimulated by Mercury and merges with Neptune, which begins with a uh, pleasant social energy for getting to know people, particularly new people. Uh, and then it finishes out with a, a, a increased communications. Uh, while feeling uh, empathy for those around you, uh, including the possibility of clairvoyance or telepathic experiences for those of us who are really sensitive by nature. And then the fourth is one Ish or Jaguar. This is about balance uh, through enjoying uh, nature with Mercury at this point, uh, forming a sextile to Neptune. So from our perspective here on Earth, it's forming a 90 degree angle. Uh, it's in harmony with uh, Mercury, it's in harmony with Neptune, which is uh, possibly stimulates imaginations and a sensitivity to the world around us, both on the physical and non-physical uh, through our intuition. This is not the best day for clarity uh, or doing like precision detailed work. Instead, uh, this is about turning our attention towards uh, the spiritual aspects of life. Uh, it would really be a way to use this energy to be benefited. And with it, we have the Pisces moon uh, finding support from Saturn, stimulated by Mars, Pluto, and the sun, and challenged by Jupiter. This is a busy day emotionally as it begins with sort of a sober, realistic view of life, and then later it shifts to a desire to work independently from others while experiencing deep emotions on a pro profound level. And then uh, it shifts again to feeling balance, uh, uh, balance between our inner and outer worlds, sort of a feeling of equanimity. Uh, and then it wraps up with benevolent and generous feelings for those in our immediate environment. And then May 5th, we've got nine men or eagle in the Zol King. This is about uh, 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 patience experience through seeing from a higher perspective. And at that point, we have Mercury opposing Saturn. So as these are all moving around, you know, they're getting to this point where, you know, they, they are 180 degrees from Saturn. So it keeps on just keeps triggering the Saturn energy, uh, uh, which... With Mercury opposing Saturn, uh, this is a this brings about real serious thoughts concerning our relationship with the world. This transit may have us feeling isolated as we're more inclined to look with a critical eye at our our, our personal relationships. So this is not the best time to act on those thoughts because um, uh, 
because our thinking gets really distorted by this type of a transit. And then we also have Mars uh, out here, you know, way out here in, in, in Taurus as well. And now it's forming a trine to Pluto. That's another 120 degree angle, uh, which is good for making changes in our lives and to become more effective uh, in, in changing the world around us. This can stimulate people's ambitions uh, without others people feeling threatened by this the new ambitions and with Pluto involved the Martian energy the ego energy uh, that Mars brings gets really supplemented supplemented uh, so that our efforts should be for the greater good uh, uh, or we'll end up sowing seeds of our own self undoing if we're just focused on our own uh, selfish uh, uh, um, um, you know goals so really you know take this energy look at something that's going to benefit more than yourself on 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 the fifth uh and then we also have the moon in pisces um harmonizing uh with venus which uh brings pleasant energy to be with friends and loved ones and the six we have 10 keep or wisdom, which is about manifestation, uh, manifest, manifestation through introspection, meditation, and forgiveness. As the Aries moon merges with Uranus uh, and and is challenged by Pluto, and you know, as I was talking about, you know, we've got the uh, Uranus and and Pluto are applying; they're moving towards their third square, which will be exact on the twentieth. So this lunation activates these two titans with people feeling impulsive and acting rashly and the moods change quickly and unexpectedly and and there's you know, compulsive behaviors to engage in activities that really are not going to be good for us in the long run so it would be uh, best to recognize that others may be acting out of character and think twice before responding to their unpredictable actions may 7th is 11 Kaban or Earth resolution through gratitude for Mother Earth, and we have Mercury now forming a trine to Pluto, so they're all kind of coming around and hitting the same spot. Uh, and uh, again, trine is a 120 degree angle. Uh, it's it's supportive, uh, which brings uh, what it does is it brings concern for the deeper issues in life. Uh, what's underneath the surface, you know, a willingness to investigate and find answers uh, and uh, unravel mysteries. This is really excellent energy to look at our inner being and dig into the deepest parts of our psyche, uh, which works best when we're not around people who distract us from that purpose. Uh, you may want to choose who you want to be around on this particular day on, on, on May 7th or for 11, come on. And also on that day, we have Mercury is conjunct Mars. So, you know, in this line here, we'll just keep lining these things up. They're moving, you know. So from the perspective on Earth, that Mercury and Mars are in a straight line, we would say they're conjunct, which should be, uh, this should be handled with care because focus, folks are going to be more argumentative. Uh, they're going to take their egos too seriously. Um, there could be information that activates circumstances with the need for action. And then we also have the moon and Aries harmonizing with Jupiter. So it's, it's nice emotionally and, and, uh, uh, and people are going to be feeling in the flow and having a sense of wholeness. Um, so, you know, best for this is really spending uh, time with old friends. That's what's particularly favored uh, with the emotional energy of the day. And then the eighth is 12 et snob or flint. Uh, this is about understanding through being uh, introspective. And we, at that point, we have the moon in Taurus is in harmony with Neptune and opposed by Saturn, uh, which combines... Uh, 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 people, uh, 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 we, the, both these energies are, are real close. So they come in when people are feeling very sensitive to the moods of others, and they're also feeling kind of isolated, you know, the, because the two energies are, are influences at the same time. So what I think this could cause is this could cause conflicts in relationships with people who seem to overwhelm us with their emotions. Uh, 
while not really being uh, responsive to our needs. And if you think about this, everybody's going to be feeling the same kind of energy. So everybody's going to feel like everyone else's emotions are too much and nobody else is connecting with what their emotions are. So this might be a tricky day. Uh, this would be a day to choose your companions carefully, I would think. And then the, the, the Tresena uh, wraps up May 9th which is uh, 13 Kawak or storm, which is a movement to the next stage by uh, recognizing the gifts of adversity. And we have the Taurus new moon and solar eclipse uh, with the moon trine or uh, Pluto and merging with Mars, Mercury and the sun. And new moons are, are times of new beginnings. And in Taurus, this is about shifting and changing the material world. With uh, solar eclipses, uh, we should focus on uh, bringing practical matters into harmony with uh, with uh, our new direction or purpose that's been really bubbling through. And then this new moon uh, brings an opportunity to set an intention for manifestation on the following new, uh, full moon. So look at the house of your astrology chart that contains 19 degrees Taurus to consider the area in your life that's being activated by the new moon. For me, this is going to be the 12th house, which is of secrets, sorrows, and self-undoing. But it's also the most mystical of all the houses in the astrology system, and it's linked to psychic powers. So I'm going to set an intention related to <coughs> excuse me, using this energy for some kind of spiritual pursuit. And then the moon... Trine Pluto brings uh, out intense emotions and it stimulates our sensitivity. It also favors sexual relationships. The moon conjunct Mars uh, may bring out irritable feelings or critical communications. But this lunation also merges with Mercury, uh, which, ha which has our rational minds being strongly influenced by our emotions. And the new moon, like I said, it's in Taurus, so it's about security, it's about practical concerns, um, money, land, real estate, and our physical bodies. Uh, so much of this energy really in indicates an increase in intensity uh, and importance regarding issues related to letting go of the old and stuck so that we can uh, accept uh, new possibilities. And also on this day, we have Venus moving into Gemini. So Venus has already cruised all the way over here and popped into Gemini uh, on, on the 9th, uh, which is going to bring um, uh, really kind of chatty, superficial quality to, uh, to social interactions. And Venus is going to be uh, in Gemini. Uh, Venus and Gemini also can bring um, kind of carelessness uh, regarding spending money uh, for all the rest of May and uh, before it goes into Cancer on June 2nd. So, you know, it's something to, to be cautious of. Um, so anyway, no matter what the energies that are affecting you during this one dear Tresena, take some time out to be in the flow of the planet by being in nature, watching a sunrise or sunset, uh, communing with the stars, being conscious of the moment through introspection, meditation, or being with somebody you love in a very conscious way. Uh, every day we have is a blessing, no matter what the dramas are, beckoning to distract us, whether they're on our personal stage or the world stage. Just realize that every one of us is giving the performance of our lifetime and so take some time out to observe the play as well as act your part. Spend some time looking at it as if you were in the audience and not just getting caught up in your part as, your, as an actor. Um, because you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. And the spiritual being really learns from observing the, the 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 movie the play uh, the 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 the, uh, the interactions um, anyway as always I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth the next uh, segment of care and feeding of a New World Age is going to be on May tenth twenty thirteen for one sun and we'll also discuss Mercury moving into Gemini 
followed by the sun moving into Gemini. Um, you can check us out on Facebook or YouTube or the Mind Magics website. And I encourage you to share this information as videos or as texts uh, as widely as you choose. Uh, I'll be discussing the astrology of May 2013 and providing some short 10 to 15 minute human design readings uh, for the participants of uh, the Earth Needs Rebels show on Orion Talk Radio on May 1st. And then I will uh, do uh, uh, also be on uh, the Freedom of Speech show on Critical Mass Radio on May 2nd. As always, I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions about what I'm discussing in these reports or if you want to contact me to schedule a reading. And, you know, the readings I do uh, for, for folks are, are much more extensive. They're, right now they're going somewhere between two and three hours uh, as I dig into what uh what they're about and what you know if you get a reading from me we're going to talk about what what you're about and and what you can actually use and do in your day-to-day -day life to be uh in the flow of your authentic self so i am providing these readings I, i'm tr doing my best to make this service available to the greatest amount of folks so i created three options with three levels of compensation these readings are designed to provide you information to help you navigate these difficult times uh, at the basic level, we are going to look at your human design chart to help you understand how to use your individual strategy and authority in making life decisions based on your unique design. Uh, I include uh, three months of astrological transits as they relate to your uh, natal and progressed astrology chart along with the human design reading at the middle level. And then at the top level, the human design and astrology transit reading will be recorded and sent to you as an mp3 file that you can download to your computer so if you've been thinking about getting a reading uh, please contact me I'd really love to give you a reading and provide a reading to you during these uncertain times you'll need to either be able to call me in Maine in the in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading I'm also accepting donations because we're trying like you know crazy just to keep New World Birth uh, going here um, and uh, that the only way we do that is uh, with the money from readings and from donations uh, so if you you, you you want to make any level of donation uh, please feel free to contact me uh, there is no amount too small it will all be graciously and uh, accepted we, we really appreciate when folks uh, try to support uh, what we're trying to do here as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time out to connect with my passion for all these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. In Lakesh. You know, my open heart and love to you all. And I, I look forward to, uh, to, to uh, connecting with you uh, next time around. So, peace.